And when God is doing something new in you and you are carrying your cross, I want you to know something. And if you're carrying your cross daily, daily, listen to me, people are going to see a new you every day. And so what happens is we've got people, we know people by who they used to be. I don't want people just to know me by who I used to be. I want people to know me by who I am today. Hey guys, I'm so glad you're here. Get ready for this week's newest message. Pastor Paul is in an awesome series right now called Marvel at the King of Kings, and I can't wait to see what he has for us this week. Well, if you have a few seconds, download the Rescue Church app, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to make sure you get notified anytime we post something new. Well, sit back, get ready for this week's newest message, and it starts right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, you truly are the great I am, Father. There is no other greater, Father God. Lord, your word says you searched, but you couldn't find one, Father God. Lord, you truly are the Lord of Lords. You truly are the King of Kings, Father. You truly are the great I Am, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that your presence is here, Father God. Lord, that, Father, you begin to move, you speak, you touch, you transform every life, Father. Lord, we say in the name of Jesus, Father, everything that is not of you, we command it to leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You pour out your spirit upon your people, Father God. Fill us to overflow, Father God. Allow, Father God, the presence of heaven to show in this place. Angels on assignment, Father God. Woo, right here, Father. We know that the battle is the Lord's, Father God. And Lord, we release, Father, everything, Father, that's come against us, Father. We release it into your hands, Father. We thank you right now, Lord, you are at work, Father God. Lord, we believe, Father God, when you start a good thing in us, Lord, you are faithful and just to complete it, Father. Ooh, Lord, we thank you, Father. Ooh, Lord, we're not there yet, but Father, we know this. We're on our way, Father. We're on our way, Father. We're on our way, Father. Thank you, Lord. And for us from in this room, maybe there's some of you, you feel weary. I just want you to know, listen to me, don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. God's already made a way. God's already made a way. He's already prepared the way. God's already got the answer. God's already got the solution. God's already got the blessing. God's already got the breakthrough. All you got to do is trust Him. Trust Him. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your presence in this place, Father. Thank you for that sweet, sweet spirit, Father. Lord, we love you, Father. We worship you. We praise you, Father. no one like Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. Come on, I want you to, to slap your neighbor high five. Say the King of Kings is in the house. Say the King of Kings is in the house. Come on and try to be seated if you can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I've got a, uh, a lengthy word for y'all this morning, but I know God will show us how to compress it. But I want you guys to know, listen to me, uh, I could, I don't know about y'all, I could truly tell that the ladies came back, <laughs> fired up, fueled up, and in getting uh, an insight or revelation and knowing that God doesn't want them to be common, but uncommon, amen? And so uh, that's one thing I believe even as church, I remember when we were in youth group, I used to always tell the teams, I said, this is going to be... Um, our, our church services are going to be unusual because I want to do church unusual. I don't want to do it religiously. Can I get an amen? I believe God can do a new thing and a fresh thing. And sometimes that may be unusual. But I want you to know something. Listen to me. I don't believe God wants us to be average either. He wants us to be above average. Come on, somebody. And he wants to do some things in us that, that, that are uncommon. And, uh, and I believe God's done it in these ladies. Amen. And they got that revelation. I, I don't think this is just a one-time thing. Come on, somebody. Where you go to a conference, you catch a fire, and then it dies two weeks later. Come on. This can be where you go catch a fire and because you've, you've learned how to keep the fire lit. Come on, somebody. So tell your neighbor real quickly, say, hey, there's a king in me. 
If you got Jesus, how many guys know there's a king in you? Amen. Amen. And so uh, let me let me just dive into this this word that we have that God's prepared for us this morning. Um, I, I am truly excited to be talking about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I truly do marvel at his name. Come on, somebody. I truly do marvel at all the things that God does because he's so good. So some things, listen to me, you, you can't do without him. Come on, somebody. There's just some things you can't do without Jesus. And I just marvel how good he is and how good he's been to me. And so um, before I take off, I, I want to just uh, open up with some prayer real quick. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that your presence is here, Father. We just thank you for the spirit of the Lord, Father, that is living living inside of many of us in this room. I pray, Lord, you speak, you minister to our hearts, Father God. Deposit and download, Father, what you want us to receive, Father. And we just come expecting, ready, Father, anticipating, Father, what you want to do in it through our lives. We receive it now. Spirit of God, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. So be it, amen. Now, let me let me take off real quickly with just a little bit of... Uh, foundation work here just, just some simple teaching but this we want you guys to know when, when Jesus when Jesus is called the king of kings and the lord of lords in scripture I want you guys to capture the fact this is what it's signifying it's signifying him as a heavenly king as a holy king as a royal king as a Jewish king as a faithful king as a good king as a sovereign king as an eternal king as a victorious king and as the true king of kings and lord of lords and there is no other like him can i get an amen that's why in scripture that's why in scripture when you go to the book of revelation john the revelator when he saw many things i want you guys to understand that that's why it says that that our king had many crowns he didn't just have one crown he had many crowns and I'm going to read this to you because I don't want anybody to think I pulled this out of thin air. It's in the scriptures. Revelation 19, verses 11 through 13. Whoo, how many guys know we serve a king with many crowns? Whoo, hallelujah. That's powerful. There ain't no other king on the earth that has as many crowns as Jesus. Can I get an amen? Even in history, there's no other king that has as many crowns as Jesus. Now watch this. He says this. John says, he says, I saw he says, now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. He who sat on him was called faithful and true. He was called faithful and true. How many guys know God is faithful and he is true? He's the true king. Now this is already after the second coming when he's talking about this. And he says, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Verse 12. His eyes were like, flame, uh, uh, were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And on his head were what? Many crowns. Many crowns. He had the name written that no one knew except himself. In verse 13, he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. How many guys know Jesus is the Word? That's who he is. He is the Word. There it is in Scripture. It backs it up. But I marvel, I marvel, I marvel at this. And, I, and, and it, this is what I want to point out. Because there's so much in that scripture, but this is what I want to point. This is what I marvel. I marvel at the fact that Jesus had many crowns. Now that alone, that, that alone just causes wonder. That alone causes uh, 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 a side of me to marvel at who he is and how majestic our, our God really is. But the other thing that I marvel at is this. Not only did, does Jesus have many crowns, but in scripture, in scripture it says when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, that he will give Christians many crowns. Hallelujah. What are the king? What are the king? Most kings want all dominion and power and they don't want to give it to anybody. But Jesus has all dominion and power and how many guys know he wants to give it to his people? Marvel, marvel. What, what, what king, what king is this that would do that? What king, what king would, would give me the same authority and power that he has and, 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 and to be willing and be willing to transfer that into me simply because of who I am in him because I've become part of the family God now I'm a citizen of the kingdom and the kingdom who has many many crowns this is now I'm going to crown you if that don't marvel you whew. now what I'm about to share with you listen I want you guys to know is not often teach teach 
but, but I, I want you to know it is powerful. It is powerful. It is powerful. It is something that, listen to me, I believe God wants to deposit in this series. And so I'm, I'm going to share this with you just to back up what I said. First, I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5.10. i got to give you some scripture. And it says this. It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He's the only one who can rightfully judge. On earth, you shouldn't judge anybody. Now, we can be fruit inspectors. You'll know them by their fruit. So it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one, each one may receive the things done in the body according to what was done, whether good or bad. Now, as Christians, you got to realize something. When you're a Christian, I want to just make this clear. I don't have time to go through all the scriptures, but I want you to realize you're not going to be judged for your sin. Why? Because the blood has covered your sin. Can I get a name? But, but you will be judged for your service to him. Did y'all catch that? And see, that, that, that speaks to me. That spoke to me. That's what I remember. I remember years ago, I, was, I, I wasn't even a Christian for one year. And I remember, I remember sitting and I hearing that, hearing that actually in this church. I remember hearing that. That spoke to me so loud. And I was like, wow, wow. Listen to me. I thank God that my, my sins, sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. But when I stand before the Lord and he hits replay on my life, listen to me. It's going to be about how I served him. Come on. Are y'all hearing me? And so, and so watch this, watch this. And, and, and to back that up, I want you to, to realize that, listen, once we're judged, I want you guys to know, that's when, that's when, when we will receive, we will receive, listen to me, our, our rewards. We will see our rewards or our crowns for, for the good or bad that we've done. So let me just show you something real quickly. That's why the Apostle Paul said this. Now, this is going to, uh, some of y'all are going to go, I've read this, oh, and I've never seen this before. It's probably because you didn't finish out the verses. Many times we, we quote this scripture, but we don't finish out the whole thing. We don't go to verse 8. And let me show you. I'm going to show you what 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8 says, which most people just read 2 Timothy 4, 7. Let me show you what verse 8 says. It says this. This is why the Apostle Paul said this. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. How many of you guys know God wants us to be finishers? Man, that's powerful. He says, I have kept the faith. Remember that, I've kept the faith. Verse 8, he says, finally, watch this, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me. He's going to reward me. He's going to give, me, uh, give to me on that day. And not, only, what, not, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. That means everybody can get in on it. This is powerful. This is power, powerful. The Paul's Paul realizes, he realizes, number one, he realizes that I ran my race on earth and I finished it. I finished it what God called me to do. I didn't just start it and stop. I started it and finished it. God wants us to be finishers. Come on, you can't just start out hot. You need to stay hot and get hotter. Are y'all hearing me? Come on, somebody. And he realized that, listen to me, this, this, this is just a short time I have here on earth. But listen to me, I'm, I'm, one day I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side. And so listen to me, I have a race here on earth, but when I cross over, i got a whole other race in eternity. And what I'm doing here sets me up for what happens there. So that's why, listen to me, we don't want to just store up treasure on earth. We want to store up treasure in heaven. God, are y'all hearing me? What, do, what, listen to me, you can't take, there's certain things you're not going to be able to take with you to heaven. You ain't going to take your money with you to heaven. I'm sorry. I don't care how much you store up. But you can't take people. You can't take souls. Are y'all hearing me? Whew. Listen to me, if, if you're all about expanding the kingdom, expanding the kingdom, how many of you guys know? How many of you guys know? If you're all about spending the key, how many of you guys know there's going to be rewards? The reward is not just the people, but God's also going to reward you. Golly, watch, watch. Let me, let me just let me just finish this out. So, so, so I want to show I want to show you something real quick before I dive into the to the subject of what I'm going to be talking about today. Real quick, I just want to show you this. 
I want to show you this, that there are five, there are five crowns, five heavenly crowns mentioned in the New Testament. Some scholars call this, some scholars call it a salvation crown. Um, but we know these are heavenly crowns, crowns that we will receive. Uh, but here I also want to throw this out there. A lot of times it's not taught because we don't really know. We don't really know if it's only five. There could be more. But I'm going to give you five that's scripture, that's, that, that's, that's in the scriptures. Are y'all hearing me? So I'm going to give you five that are in the scriptures, that are, that are actually in the scriptures. I, and I know most of us probably know some of the verses. I'm going to give you the verses to back it up. We just, we just never really saw it. We just either didn't, didn't read it all the way through or we just, we just missed it. And I'm going to show you to you. These are five. These are five. Um, when uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Hagin actually talked about some of these, some of you guys may or may not know who he is. He's a, he, he was a, a man of God who's gone to be with the Lord. And uh, he used to talk about some of these. And I'm, I'm going to give you the five that are mentioned in the New Testament. So here we go. The five heavenly crowns mentioned in Scripture. Once again, there may be more. There may be more. There are people who said they've seen more. So let me give you the five that are in the New Testament. Number one is the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness. We just read about that. The crown of righteousness. These are those who live ready for Christ's return. Do you all have that on the screen? Yeah, crown of righteousness. For those who live ready for Christ's return. How many guys know we're supposed to be ready in and out of season? Are y'all hearing me? And we need to be, we need to be expecting Christ's return. Listen, but you got to realize, see, I'm not the type of person that says God return tomorrow. No, I know there's still people, there's still souls to be won for Christ, and I'm praying God give us more time. But I'm ready. Did y'all catch that? I'm sorry. I really believe when you do that, it's selfish. Because the heart of God is to get as many as he possibly can. And I've heard, I've heard, I've heard people say that. And honestly, I, I don't, I don't think that's the motivation's wrong in your prayer. I'm sorry. Your, your prayers, listen to me, ought to line up with the word. And they ought to be, how many guys know they ought to be something that's in the heart of the Father? Amen. I ain't going to get too deep into that. But listen, it's the crown of righteousness. Number two, the in, uh, incorruptible crown, also known as the imperishable crown. The incorruptible crown. And this is found in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25. If you want to look it up later. It's, it, this is for those who faithfully, who faithfully ran after eternal things over temporal things. Whew. you got to ask yourself, what are you running after? What are you really running after? Are you running after just, just earthly things or are you running after heavenly things? Are you running after things that are temporal or are you running after things that are eternal? God, are y'all hearing me? I got quiet when I said that one. Woo. My wife will tell you, I've told my staff, I tell them often, I said, listen to me, when I think what Pastor Paul thinks, I want you to know how I think. I don't just, I don't just think temporal, I always think eternal. Even when I make decisions, I ask myself, does this decision, is it going to affect what could happen to somebody for eternity? If it, if it does, then I choose, I choose not to do it because, listen to me, what happens to them on the earth is one thing. But listen to me, I want their eternal or their spiritual well-being to be number one. Did y'all capture that? So that's how I want to make my decisions because I think eternal. I think eternal. Even with Becky and I in life. Listen to me, there might be areas that, listen to me, that I can, I can maybe I could do this and make more money. Maybe I could do this and this deal over here and it might benefit something else. But listen to me, if it hurts me spiritually and it hurts my relationship with Jesus, my relationship with my wife, then I'm not going to do it. Did y'all get that? Remember, the king comes first. Did y'all catch that? Well, yeah, but right now this would help me out. This would help me out, so I need to do it this way. Yeah, you can do it that way, and it will help you out, but not to the degree that God can help you out. So we make decisions based on what help, what causes a fix for the moment instead of making a decision on what could cause a fix for the moment and for eternity and for eternal things. Did y'all catch that? That is powerful, man powerful so so watch so I, I talked about the incorruptible crown now let's talk about the crown of life then there's the crown of life this is for those who were willing to endure hardships and die for the cause of Christ what happened at Columbine what's happened to some of our schools where Christians have been persecuted to the point of death how many guys know there's a crown laying up for them I don't know but that touches me that touches me that God doesn't forget them. Even if other people may forget them. How many guys know God will never forget them? 
And listen, you're going to have to learn to endure. You're going to have to learn to endure hardships. That's, listen to me, that's, that's why we spiritually train. That's why we come to church, y'all ain't hearing me, so we can get spiritually fit, so we can endure the hardships when they come in life. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah, that's why you're here this morning. Come on, somebody. You're here this morning. You're here to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're here to allow the King of kings to be your coach, to be your trainer. And he's going to use your pastor to speak a word to you to help you grow. Come on, somebody. Because he is the word of life. And that's what his word always brings. Life. That's why somebody can come in and they can get a word from God. And what they thought, listen to me, was dead or dormant. How many guys all of a sudden that seed comes to life again? And when they thought they couldn't dream, next thing you know, they can dream again. Come on, somebody. When they, when they, when they thought them, when they thought that, listen to me, this is not me. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. And the devil kept lying to them and saying they weren't good enough, and and that they haven't, they haven't had enough schooling, they haven't had enough training. But God says, listen to me, just listen to me. Watch what a word can do in your life. One word. Oof. Woo, come on, somebody. I can take you from the bottom and bring you to the top. Joseph, you can be in the pit, but I can take you to the palace. I can pull you out of the prison. Come on, somebody. Woo. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Amen. Come on, somebody, and do something great with your life. That's what the Word does. That's why it's important that we get the word, because the word brings life. Come on, somebody. Do you want life? Do you want life all around you? Come on, somebody. We've got to get the word in us, but we've also got to get the word out. Crown of life. Number four is the crown of glory. I know this is a long intro, but I got to get it out. Number four, crown of glory. This is for those who truly walked in their calling and helped others to do the same. It's all, sometimes it's known as the ministers of the pastor's crown. That's what a lot of, a lot of scholars call it, the crown of glory. They call it that. And I'm not, I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you. What, I'm going to give you what the scripture says. I'm just telling you what some scholars say. It's not what Pastor Paul says. This is called the crown of glory. And it's, it's for those who truly walked in their calling. They truly walked in their purpose, truly walked in their destiny, and they helped others do the same. God, Listen to me. God's going to reward you for that. He's going to reward you for that. You can go back and read that. It's in First Peter. Five, two through four. And the last one, let me give you this one. And these are no particular order either. Verse uh, number five, the last one is the crown. We, a lot of people call it the crown of joy. In, in the King James, it's called the, the count of rejoice, the crown of rejoicing. And so the crown of joy or the crown of rejoicing, it's also known as the soul winning crown. That's what Kenneth Hagin used to call it. He used to call it the soul winning crown. And it's also, and it's known by a lot of pastors quoted that way. And so, Listen to me, this soul winning crown, it's for those who passionately led others to Christ. It's for those who passionately led others to Christ. Now, when I share this with you guys and I lay it for a foundation for the subject that I want to speak to you on, I want you to realize this speaks to me. This speaks to me because, number one, I I don't know about you, I want to make sure that, listen to me, when I stand before my king one day, that he says, Well done, good and faithful servants. And listen to me, and I I don't know about you, but that, that matters to me. That matters to me, but I'm going to tell you something that even speaks more louder to me than just that. Though that speaks loud, and it speaks volumes to me in here. I, even as I'm telling you, I can just feel it resonating inside of me. My spirit's just leaping on the inside. But the other thing that speaks loud to me is that, listen to me, I don't want others to miss out. I don't want others to miss out. I got family that don't know the Lord, man. They're living crazy. They're living crazy. Listen to me, I don't, I don't want them to miss out. They think they're living, but they're not living. They're just dying. Are y'all hearing me? But I want them to realize, listen to me, that listen to me, what the world says is living is dying, but what God says is living is always living. And I don't want them to miss out. Come on, somebody. And so let, let this message speak to you this morning. I hope it stirs something inside of you. I hope, I hope it fires you up, fires you up to realize that, listen to me, what the King of kings and the Lord has, Lord has done for you. He has great things in store for you in heaven, but I want you to realize He also has great things in store for you on earth. 
This is where it starts. It starts here before you get there. And so let's get a fire in us to serve Him well. Let's, let's get a fire in us and not be ashamed of the name of Jesus. Let's get a fire in us when we go out in the world that we don't hide who we believe in. That if they can play their music that talks bad about other people in the Lord, that we can play our music that exalts His name and lifts up the name of Jesus. And I make no apologies for who I believe in. And you may not like the truth, but listen to me. I want you to know something. There are people who will hate on the truth. Because they don't really want the truth. They just want to continue to live the life they live. But I want you to know something. That's not living, that's dying. And God has so much better for each and every one of us. The best life you can ever live is when you're giving your best to Jesus. Nothing better. Nothing better. Nothing better. Nothing better. You, you can give me a lottery ticket that can win tomorrow. And listen to me, I will be excited. And I will tithe off of it. But I want you to know something. Listen to me, that ticket would have been given to me because I wouldn't buy one. Because if I'm going to sow, I'm going to sow into something that's a guarantee, not a gamble. And I, 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 want, I want things that God's hands on, not the world. Hands are on. That's, man, wow. I hope that speaks to somebody. So this morning, I'm going to share with you, and I'm about to move quickly, and I'm going to share with you on the subject of, watch this, the cross comes before the crown. Church, we've got to remember this. The cross comes before the crown. Ooh, man. Just let that sink in just for a moment as I roll up my sleeves. i got to roll up my sleeves because I, I know there's about to be a fight. About to be a fight. And I'm going to roll up my sleeves and let the enemy know that I'm going in swinging. And I ain't going to let nothing get in the way. It may not look purdy, but it works. Amen. Tell your neighbor the cross comes before the crown. Did not our Jesus know that? Church, we need to know that. Watch this. Is powerful. The cross comes before the crown. Most people want the crown of victory, but they don't want to carry the cross. Most people just, just, just say, this, this is what I want, this is what I want, I want, I want the crown, I want the crown. But you got to realize before you get the crown, you got to carry the cross. Where there is no cross, there is no crown. In other words, we, we, and we're not going to raise this type of generation in this church. But in other words, there, there are people, there are people who they want the heavenly rewards without kingdom service. They want kingdom blessings without having to do anything, anything that the Father asks them to do. Meaning they want kingdom blessings without going about the Father's business. They want harvest without having to plow or to sow. They want, they, they, they want heaven, but they don't want to lead others to heaven on earth. Oh, my. They want spiritual gain without having to train or even go through any pain. You can't get the gain without the pain. And I'm here to tell you that you have to learn to carry your cross before you can get to the crown. Are y'all hearing me? The cross comes before the crown. Though there is a crown laid up for us, though there is a crown that's laid before us, listen, we've got to learn to carry our cross. So many people are focused on getting to heaven, but they forget that God wants to bring heaven to earth. We're so focused on, on kingdom principles, but we forgot the one that we forgot. Listen to me, the kingdom principles are important, but we've got to remember who's the king of the principles. 
And what does God want to do? What good does God want to do with the principles? The principles, listen to me, aren't just to say, here's the principles of God. The principles are so that you can apply them to your life. The principles are for the people of God and for the kingdom of God. And if we'll apply the principles, the principles will work for the just and the unjust. As the Bible says. Why? Because God's not a man. He should lie. And if he said it, he has to do it. Did y'all catch that? Man, this is good stuff. So watch, number one. Watch. This is powerful. A crown from heaven starts with carrying your cross and following Jesus. Boy, do we got to get back to this. A crown from heaven starts with carrying your cross and following Jesus. Listen to me. You have to start with dying to self before living for him. Oh, my, my, my. You have to start from turning from your ways before you can walk in his ways. You have to start with crucifying your flesh before you can learn to take steps of faith. And that's what carrying your cross is. It's all about dying to self. It's about crucifying my ways. It's about crucifying my flesh. Because I don't want to live. I want Christ to live inside of me. I don't want people to see me. I want them to see the Jesus in me. I don't want them to see who I used to be. I want them to see who God has made new. Are y'all hearing me? And when God is doing something new in you and you are carrying your cross, I want you to know something. And if you're carrying your cross daily, daily, listen to me, people are going to see a new you every day. And so what happens is we've got people, we know people by who they used to be. I don't want people just to know me by who I used to be. I want people to know me by who I am today. Because God is doing something new inside of me. Woo. Hallelujah. I don't want them to know that Pastor Paul used to drink and he doesn't drink anymore. That's great. That happened at one time. But I want them to know now that Pastor Paul, how many guys know he fills himself up with new wine? And because he fills up with some new wine, how many guys know God does something good inside of him today? And so now he, he's not only filled, but now he's pouring out. Oh. My, my, my. Where are we? Where are we? So, so, so focused on, on the reward. So focused on the promises. And though God has these promises for them, and they truly are yes and amen. They truly are. But are we willing? Are we willing to carry the cross? To get to the crown? Are we willing to carry the cross? to get to where God wants us to be. Even Jesus, even Jesus wanted it to pass away, but he said, no, not my will, but let the Father's will be done. If he could bypass the cross, he would have, but he couldn't bypass the cross because there's how many guys know there's things done in the crucifying stage. It doesn't mean God won't resurrect bring you back to life but when it brings you back to life you won't look like what people saw on the cross the cross comes before the crown church I said the cross comes before the crown Jesus put it this way and you can find this in the other gospels but in the gospel of Luke he said this in chapter 9 verse 23 to 24 he said this then Jesus he's talking to the crowd he said to the crowd if any one of you wants to be my follower another transition uh, translation uses the word disciple if anybody uh, any one of you wants to be my follower you must turn from your selfish ways you must turn from your selfish ways You must turn. We've got to remember, listen to me, the word repent. you got to realize that truly means to turn. And we've created, listen to me, hear me, and we're not going to do this. We've created a place. We've learned to say we're sorry, and that's it. We leave it at the altar. But no, he didn't say just to say you're sorry. Forgive me of my sins. He says, now turn. He will forgive you of your sins, but he doesn't want you to repeat the sin. He wants you to turn from it. Man. Turn from it. And then he says, take up your cross. And then he uses the word daily. It's not a one-time thing, church. I got saved. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And yeah, I'm good to go. No, you got to do that every day. 
it, you got to hear my heart on this. Can y'all hear my heart on this? Say, Pastor, I love you. Thank you. That was great. Amen. But listen, we, we truly, truly hear. I want you to hear my heart as a pastor and here at Rescue. It's one thing we're truly doing. I'm, I'm not, listen, I want to have great church, and I believe the great church is the best thing we can do for our culture and our society. But listen, I don't want to just have great church. I want you guys to be the church. I, I want you guys to take what God's given you here and, and use it out there. But listen, I don't want you to just have church in here. I want you to learn to have church 24 7. I want you to learn to have church in your living room. I want you to learn how to get your family together and have a little worship service with your kids. I want you to learn to have some Bible time with your children. But it just doesn't happen on Saturdays and Sundays. It needs to happen daily. Every day you ought to hear some word. Every day you ought to get your worship on. Every day you ought to get your praise on. And I think if we had more filled Christians, oh, I could put it this way. I really believe if we had more Christians that were, listen to me, being the church, I believe there'd be less emptiness of Jesus in our world. Did y'all catch that? It's good stuff. So let me read this again. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, daily, and follow me. You got to follow him. In other words, listen to me, you have to start, you have to start with turning, turning to Jesus daily. You got to start with turning to Jesus daily. It's not, I turned to him one time. No, you got to turn to Jesus every single day of your life on earth. You turn, you turn to Jesus daily and then, and then you follow Jesus daily. You don't just follow him on, on church days. And sing kumbia and go home and, and listen to something else. Oh my. You don't want me to go there. We gotta turn, we gotta turn to Jesus daily, daily. We follow him, Jesus. You know, I believe this when we turn to him daily, we carry our cross daily. I believe it's gonna lead you to greater victories, it's gonna lead you to greater blessings, it's gonna lead you to a better life. <laughs> Yeah, you may have to crucify some things. You, you're going to have to pick up your cross daily. You're going you're gonna to have to choose to follow him daily because your flesh is going to tell you that you don't need Jesus today. But I want you to know something. You need Jesus every day. Well, he already, he already rescued my marriage. Yeah, but listen to me. Do you want that marriage to maintain or do you want it to grow? I got a good marriage. That's awesome. But do you want a great marriage? My kids are good. Yeah, but do you want your kids to be great and on fire for Jesus? Well, they're not followers. That's great. I'm glad, but listen to me. They're leaders. They're great. They are leaders. But if they're leaders, they ought to be leading other children to church and to Christ. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Amen. You got to do it daily. And can I just give you a quick side note on this point? Just, just a quick side note. Jesus is looking for. Jesus is looking for. Hear my heart on this. He's looking for followers, not fans. Are you cheering for Jesus or praising Jesus? I'm sorry. We serve a king in heaven. Listen to me. He, 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 listen to me. He loves praises. He don't need to be cheered. He just needs praises. Why? Because praises come from an experience with God cheers come from those who've only seen other people experience it. Do you want your, your own encounter? Or you just want to hear about the encounters other people are having? Yeah, I preach it so good right now. I'm serious. Y'all to take up an offering. I ain't lying. Amen. I'm for real. I'm thinking about it. Hallelujah. This is a side note. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is looking for followers, not fans. Jesus is looking for servants, not celebrities. Everybody want to be a celebrity in the church? No, this is for servants. His kingdom isn't, isn't about celebrities. His kingdom is all about servants. Everybody want to make a name for yourself. No, listen to me. If you want to make a name for yourself, I want you to know you've just become a celebrity. A servant wants to make a name for Jesus. I don't care if I get any credit. I want all the credit to go to God because I truly want him to get all the glory. Because the glory isn't mine, it's to him. But listen, if he chooses to bring glory to me, that's his choice. And don't you get mad when he does. Woohoo! 
my, my, my. Well, how did they get there? How did that happen for them? It can happen for you too. Because the cross comes before the crown. Just a few more examples. Jesus, Jesus, listen, I want you to know something he's looking for. He's, he's looking, and just hear my heart on there. He's, he's looking for contributors, not just consumers. And I'm going to be telling you honestly, I really believe this was hurting the church. And, and y'all going to, I'm going to have to just pff, talk like this. But I'm going to get it out. But I want y'all to realize something real quickly. It, it, it amazes, amazes to me that, listen to me, we, we should want to contribute to the church, not just consume from it. People are willing to go to Walmart. People are willing to go to Burger King. People are willing to go to McDonald's. They don't have a problem spending a dollar on a dollar, on a dollar menu. I got quiet up in here. And I can even talk to the businessman who doesn't mind investing into to stocks because he knows he's going to get a great return. But here's my point. Listen to me. Why wouldn't you want to invest into the church? Because when you invest in the church, you're investing into the kingdom. And do you know when you invest into the kingdom, God guarantees a return? There is, there's no, listen to me, there's no return, listen to me, that you can get on a business deal that, listen to me, that's greater than the return that you're going to get on the Father's business. God. And people get mad at the church because we talk about money and people start acting funny and acting silly. But they don't have a problem. But when we talk about how you can get a sale over here, they'll spend their money because they're getting a sale. Will you invest your money because God's going to bring you a great return? Do you know that you can invest in a company and a company, listen, I want you, they, they, might, be a make, they may have, might be able to make a little difference and they might be able to bring some return to your life. But when you invest into the kingdom, you know what? The church is the only thing that, listen me, that can change the world. I'm sorry, there's no company out there that can change the world, but the church can. Why wouldn't you want to invest in something that could change the world? Ah, better just move on. Here's the last thing I want to say. Jesus, Jesus is looking for friends, not people who just want a free meal. Man, that's powerful. And I want you to hear my heart on this. Maybe you said, maybe you said, hey, Pastor, I've, I've, I've failed to follow Jesus. Maybe I've made mis- mistakes. Maybe I've, you've gone to the left. Maybe there's things that cause you to go the wrong direction. I want you to know something. Let's be all you have to do is take one step, and you're right back where you need to be. One step towards Jesus, and you're right back where you need to be. You can get right on course. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Watch this. Point number two. Point number two. The cross comes before the crown. Number two. Watch this. Carrying your cross means following Jesus at any cost. bottom line, man. That's it. Carrying your cross means following Jesus at any cost. I don't care what it costs me. I'm going to follow him. I don't care what it costs me. I'm going to follow him. It may cost me some friends. Listen to me, but listen to me. I'm going to continue to follow him. It may even cost me some family, but I'm going to continue to follow him. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. It may even cost me some places and some things, but I'm going to continue to follow him. I'm not going to allow anything to get between me and Jesus. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is the one who healed my life. Jesus is the one who took me out of the pit and put me on solid ground. Jesus is the one who gave me life again. Jesus is the one who took me out of darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. Jesus is the one who set me free and can set my children free. Come on, somebody. There ain't nobody like Jesus. And it may cost me some things. But my loyalty belongs to Christ and Christ alone. Because there is no other like him. He is the king of kings and he is the king of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. So he he says this, Jesus says this in Luke. And we jump up to to chapter 14. And in chapter 14 he says this. I'm going to give it to you in the living translation to help make more sense. Verse 26 to 27. He says, anyone. How many guys know that's anyone? In the Greek, it's still anyone. <laughs> anyone, anyone. I got to say that some people think it's for some people. No, it's for anyone. Anyone who wants to be my follower must love me far more than he does. Watch this. His own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, or sisters. Yes, more than his own life. Otherwise, he cannot be my disciple. He can't be my student. He can't be a Christ follower. 
verse 27. And no one, and no one can be my disciple who does not carry his own cross and follow me. We got to carry our own cross. That means we can't carry other people's burdens. Are y'all hearing me? You got to listen to me. You, you, you start focusing on all the challenges that people have. Listen to me. You're going to miss what God wants to do in your life. I don't, I don't have time to get in, but here we go. So watch this. Remember, you got to carry the cross. You got to carry your cross. That means following Jesus at any cost. And following Jesus at any cost, at any cost. Listen to me. It, it's being, and hear my heart, it's being committed. It's being committed to serve Jesus in every season of life. I said it's being committed to serve Jesus in every season of life. Where are the Christians that can be committed in every season of life? I can be committed in summer. I can be committed in spring. But can, can you be committed in every season of life? Winter, spring, summer, or fall, it doesn't matter. I'm committed to follow Jesus and I will carry my cross every day because I want what God has for my life and I want God to use my life to make a difference in this world. Commitments. We're the committed soldiers. We're the committed hands and feet of Jesus. Wow. We're the committed servants. We're the committed soul winners. Commitment. Commitment brings great achievement got to be committed. Following Jesus at any cost means you have to be available. I'm available, Lord. I'm available to help advance the kingdom in any way at any cost. I'm available. But what if God, 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 what if God says, I need you now? I, I can't do now. I could do later, but God says later won't work. I need now. Are you really going to put Jesus on hold? And we put Jesus on hold and we think it's okay. Listen to me, there ought to be something inside of you saying that's not okay. I'm sorry. I'm not putting Jesus on hold. When he says go, I'm going. I may have to drop some things. I may have to rearrange my schedule. But if he says go, I'm going. I'm not going to say, Jesus, hold up just for a minute. I got to do this. I got to do No, he says go, I got to go. Are we available? Oh, I'm, I'm totally surrendered to Jesus. Are you? How far are you willing to go to follow Jesus? Are you going to go with him one mile? Or are you going to go with him all the way to eternity? Man, I'm preaching good. You got to be committed. You got to be available. And you got to be teachable. You can't be a disciple if you're not teachable. God is looking for students, not critics. People will, listen to me, listen, people willing to learn, to grow. So their lives will grow. And if your life grows, how many guys know you can help others grow? Are y'all hearing me? People who say, I haven't arrived. You never arrive. It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. Teach that to leaders all the time. Are you willing to learn something new? <sighs> the last thing is you got to be faithful. You got to faithful. Be faithful to giving your time, talents, and treasures to help expand His kingdom. And how many guys know it? Faithfully following Jesus at any cost will always pay off. Did y'all hear that? I said faithfully following Jesus at any cost will always pay off. Two scriptures I'm going to close. Watch this: Revelation 17, 14. I want you to see this. And this is what will happen in the end. It says, they will wage war against the Lamb. That's Jesus. But the Lamb will what? Triumph. He's going to have victory. The, the Lamb will triumph over them. Because He is what? The Lord of lords and the King of kings. And with Him, watch this, and with Him will be His called, His chosen and faithful followers. Have you? I just read it to you. It doesn't matter what you face in this life. You're going to get victory. You're going to win because he is the king of kings and lord of lords. You've already got the victory because of Jesus. It may not look like you're winning, but you're going to win. 
Amen. But who will be with him? It's, it's amazing to me that this is descriptive in the Bible. It blows me away that it's even here. It's, it blows me away that, that, that he even saw this. And he said, and, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. I don't know about you. I want to be a faithful follower. I don't want to follow him one day and follow the world the next. I don't want to follow his ways one day and then follow mine the next. Are y'all hearing me? I don't want to follow his word one day and then follow what other people say the next. See, faithful followers watch us. There are believers. There are believers who stayed the course, who ran their race and kept the faith. That's who he's talking about right here. He's talking about the people, the people, the people who, who stayed on course. It doesn't mean they didn't get off course, but they got back on course. It, didn't, it doesn't mean that they didn't stop in the middle of the race, but they kept running their race. They didn't allow anything to keep them from quitting. And they kept the faith no matter what came against them. They didn't question God. God, why did this happen? God, why is this going? Why is this happening in my life? God, why are these, these negative things happening to me? Why do good, why do bad things happen to good people, Lord? Well, you ever thought for a moment that it isn't God, but it's the enemy? And if we get our eyes off the problem and get our eyes on Jesus, maybe Jesus would show up and answer. And what the enemy meant for bad, God can turn it into good. Hallelujah. The weapon may have formed, but it will not prosper. The enemy is might have raised a standard against me, but I'm going to raise a standard against the enemy by calling on the name of Jesus. I faithfully follow Jesus, and though my life might be attacked, but listen to me, if you come against me, you're not just coming against me, you're coming against the king in me. Amen. I've seen this, and we don't talk about this much, but I've seen, I've seen people come against God's people and come against God's anointed. And I've watched people, listen to me, you watch, they come against it, and they, they, may have, they, may have, they may have penetrated for the moment, but God, listen to me, he pushed it back, and he had to heal it. Sometimes, listen to me, you, you will get hurt in battle. I'm sorry, you, you are immature to think that you're not going to get hurt in battle sometimes. The, the challenge is, listen to me, we shouldn't be wounding ourselves, our own warriors. Are y'all hearing me? But it's one thing when we get wounded by the enemy, but listen to me, God will heal that wound. And he'll get you back on where you, where you need to be so you can faithfully follow him. Because God wants us to faithfully follow him. Are y'all hearing me? And so he may have to heal a wound, but don't you listen to me, turn your back on Jesus. Man, I'm preaching good. I don't know who that's for. Let me just close with this last scripture and I'm done. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25, to back up what I'm sharing with you guys. This is the Apostle Paul once again. And he says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? He says, run in such a way as to get the prize. That means God just has something specifically for you. Verse 25, everyone who competes in, in, in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a what? A crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Listen to me, Jesus will always reward those who run after him and remain faithful to his kingdom. But before the crown, we've got to carry the cross and faithfully follow Jesus. And so I don't know who you are in here this morning. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe you backslidden. Maybe you you stopped following Jesus. Maybe you're watching online and you say, Pastor, I've stopped following Jesus. I want you to know this is your moment. This is your time to get back on track with him. Don't allow anything to to detour you or keep you from getting back online with Jesus. Get back on the course with Jesus to get back in the race. Maybe you you say, "I've, I've never even surrendered my life to Christ. I want you to know the Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And you will. Listen to me. You will make heaven. But listen to me. God wants to also cause heaven to work in your life as a believer and so wherever you're at in this room wherever you're at watching online i want to pray for you You say pastor that's me i need to to surrender my life to christ or maybe you say hey pastor that's me i need to come back to jesus and start following him faithfully if that's you i want to pray for you now can i see your hand anybody all don't be ashamed of the name of jesus that's me that's me i see your hand i see your hand i see your hand 
I see your hands. Can y'all just get your hands up high one more time? Listen, never be ashamed. Never be ashamed. Never be ashamed. I see your hands. 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 Y'all can lower your hands. I'm going to ask the church, just everybody to stand. Can everybody just stand as I lead them in this prayer? Everybody just repeat after me. Everyone say, Dear Lord, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new. Help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I receive your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. I believe I'm heaven bound. In Jesus' name, amen. Can y'all give them a hand? Hallelujah.